Yes, the sound is working, don't worry. Um, hi guys. This is Shay on Thursday instead of Wednesday. I messed up. Um, this is Piccolo. He's so cute. That's his very attentive big sister. Um, he is, like, all kinds of a mutt, actually. He's a super big mix of all kinds of stuff. Um, and by big, I, I don't... He was actually 14 ounces at his six-week checkup last week. Um, but he's seven weeks old today, and he's super cute, and I love him, and he's really cute. <laughs> um, this week's topic is surgery. Uh, so, surgery's in our house lately. Um, his dad got fixed. No more puppies for us. Um, and the little white dog that we were playing with last week. Um, Gavin's naked, yay! Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the white dog last week, um, she had her puppies on Monday night, well, she, alright, she went into labor at, like, 11-something, and then around, like, I think it was maybe 2.30 in the morning, we decided to take her in to get a C-section. Beesh. Beesh. Oh, excuse you. But we had to take her in to get a C-section, and she ended up having six freaking puppies. Um, and she got fixed that same night, too, so... So, we've had surgeries in our house recently. Um, so that kind of totally makes me a professional on this topic. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Alright, so, for Gavin, my partner, two and a half years now, um, he wants to get top surgery um, with Dr. Garamoni in Florida. If you've never heard of him, you should totally look for him. Because he's cool. Um, and I think we're probably at least a year away from it, maybe more. <laughs> helping. Um, yeah, we're probably maybe a year and a half to two years away from top surgery, I think. Um, I'm in my final semester of college, graduate, we're going to move somewhere amazing and awesome and um, be millionaires immediately and, you know, life will be good. Um, Alright, I think I'm supposed to talk about my feelings about surgery. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that. Um, Alright, for the most part, I'm so excited. Uh, I grew up on a beach, and I love the water, and I cannot wait to teach Gavin how to surf, and take him snorkeling, and just, you know, do all kinds of water stuff. Um, I can't wait for him to prance around on the beach topless, and feel good about himself, and be happy. Um, I can't wait for him to wear t-shirts outside of the house. <laughs> I don't know about your partner, but mine doesn't like the way um, binders and t-shirts look, so I think maybe, oh, I might have seen him outside of the house in a t-shirt maybe three times in the last, like, two and a half years. Um, so I know that's kind of silly, but I'm looking forward to that, because I think he's really cute in a t-shirt. Um, he's pretty buff, and his arms look really good, so I'm a fan. <laughs> um, but, yeah, most of the time that's my take on it. I'm really excited, I can't wait. Um, really can't wait till he feels you know, that much happier with himself, and feels good, and looks, looks good, and, you know, looks the way he feels, and just, you know, all that shit, I'm excited, um, that's my take most of the time, and then every now and then, I get a little sad about it, um, and honestly, most of the time, it's kicked off by discussions with other partners, who are maybe new to the concept of being trans, and what it means, and, you know, they're expressing their reactions, and it reminds me of, I guess, my own grief about it. Um, you know, I am a lesbian, and I am attracted to people that are female-bodied, and so the idea of my partner being less female-bodied than he is right now can occasionally be a little intimidating and a little sad. Um, I think most partners' concern about that, and, you know, a lot of trans people's concern about their partners, is that they wouldn't be attracted to him anymore, or that it would change their sexual dynamic. And, on one hand, I think that's a valid fear, because it is a very big change. But, on the other hand, I think... <laughs> it was so good until I lost track. Um, I don't know. I think it's a valid thing to express concern about 
and discuss with your partner or with your friends that are understanding about, you know, what being trans means. Um, and I bet you you'd get better advice that way than if you just randomly talked about it. And partners, it's very important for you to provide a safe, comfortable space for your significant others to express those feelings and those emotions and to go through the grieving process. Together, yeah. Because um, I think a lot of times... It you doesn't know, mean they're not supportive. It doesn't mean we're not being supportive. It just means that we're expressing emotions. Because um, I think a lot of times, especially when you first come out as trans, you know, you're so excited to finally understand what's going on with you, why you've always felt a certain way, why, you know, like, life just makes sense. Your light bulb just clicked on, and all of a sudden you know the answer, um, and you're going to be able to fix it. Um, so I think, especially initially, he, a lot of trans people get really tunnel-visioned about and focused on, you know, their end goal of what they want to look like and be like and act like and sound like. And I think, I think that's a good thing because it gives you motivation to make changes in your life. But at the same time, I think it's really important for trans people to provide a safe space for their partner also for the grieving they might need to do. Um, you know, some people never grieve about it, about any kind of surgery or changes, you know, hormones or no hormones, whatever. Um, but I think it's really important for from the partner's side to be, to provide a safe space and the trans partners to provide a safe space for these discussions that can be a little emotional, um, like a tunnel vision, that's what I remembered where I was going with that. Um, you know, you're so tunnel vision, you're so excited about everything, that anybody that isn't as excited as you are might come across as being negative or not supportive, even though I guarantee you most of the time we're trying to be supportive, we just don't exactly understand, and we're confused, and we, you know, we don't know what you want or what you need, or like how to interact with you. Um, you know, is it okay to treat you the same way we used to when you went by female pronouns? Or, like, you know, did you, like, what are we supposed to do? Um, so I always think it's so important for both of you to give each other a safe and comfortable place to discuss difficult things like surgeries. Um, and I think <laughs> my favorite petition all the time is to, dear trans person, please don't get mad at us when we're confused or asking questions or, you know, you've known about this for so long, maybe quietly, but you've thought these things for so long and it just, just we just figured it out, you know, we just learned recently. So please be gentle with us and forgive us when we say messed up things occasionally and just please forgive us. And then at the same time, partners... I know it's scary, and I know, you know, you don't know what's going on, but you also need to be careful with the way you word things, um, to make sure that you are, I guess that, that you don't sound like you're saying no, you can't do it, or no, um, yeah, or giving ultimatums like Gavin just threw in, um, because, like, say he's really, really excited about something, and you just say no that kind of, I feel like it breaks the trust a little bit because um, you just shot down something really important to him. And I don't think that's good for relationships in the long run. Yeah. All right, so back to me and my take on, sur on top surgery. Oh, Gavin doesn't want bottom surgery, by the way. Um, this is like my third take of this video because I keep getting statistics and information wrong. Um, he told me, he informed me quite firmly a few minutes ago that he does not want bottom surgery. Um, I always thought, up until a few minutes ago, that he didn't want bottom surgery because science isn't up to par with what he would like. Um, so I, I guess I'd always thought that he was going to kind of revisit it in, you know, like 15 or 20 years once technology is a little better. But he very firmly informed me that, no, that's not one of his plans. And I think that's awesome because... I don't want the peep. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the peep, and I don't want to have it. Um, I'm just fortunate that I don't have bottom dysphoria, but a lot of guys do. A lot of guys do have bottom dysphoria. Um, thankfully for Gavin, he views his <laughs> he views his nether re regions as a place to go to the bathroom and uh, orgasm. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with that stance on it, it doesn't really bother him what it looks like right now. 
Um, in case you didn't know, your junk grows when it's on teeth. Um, yeah. Uh, to be honest, though, if he were wanting top surgery, I would have a hard time with that because I am a lesbian and I don't like the peep, so I am very grateful and fortunate that, you know, I'm dating somebody that doesn't want that, um, because it would be really hard for me, you know, because you love the person so much and you want to do everything possible to make them happy, but then, you know, if it's something you're, that you're just so uncomfortable with and you can't have in your life, then I think it's a very important discussion for you guys to have eventually, maybe not immediately, but eventually, um, you know, to sort it out, because I just, I know I've heard of a lot of people that didn't go on hormones or didn't have surgery because their partner didn't want them to, or because their parents didn't want them to, um, and I just, it's, it's really sad to me when that happens, because, I, I don't know, you know, part of being trans is modifying your body to get it to the shape and the style and the visual that you want that'll make you happy. So when you don't do that, it just, it makes me sad. Like, I respect the people that do it because, I, for me, it's a testament of how much they love whoever they're not doing it for, I guess. Um, but I just, I always get really worried that eventually it'll bend, build up a lot of resentment and, you know, like... Oh my god, it would suck so bad if in 15 years Gavin was like, well, I always wanted bottom surgery, but you didn't want it, so I didn't get it. I just, I don't want that kind of guilt on my conscience. Um, I think that's the general idea. Uh, top surgery, for the most part, I'm really excited and looking forward to, but occasionally I do grieve because I'm a lesbian and I like that body part. Um, you know, so... And like I was saying earlier, it, get, it usually gets kicked off by me discuss, you know, talking with other partners about it. Um, and I'll, you know, remember about how sad I was initially. Because I think, like, the first time I actually learned that a lot of trans people, a lot of trans guys get top surgery. Like, I think I stopped and cried about it for a few hours and, you know, did my best to tuck it behind me. Because for me this relationship and, you know, this person I'm in love with is just, it's worth, it's worth it for me, you know, I just, I love so much, alright, I'm not saying that if you don't want your partner to get top surgery that you don't love so much about them, but for, for our, our relationship, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know, it's such a wonderful, fulfilling, satisfying, productive relationship that, I'm not going to let something as minimal as top surgery break it up, you know, or ruin it. Um, I know our interactions are going to change when that happens because, well, first and foremost, post-surgery, like, I don't know, I just, uh, I don't want him to hurt any more than he already is, so I'm going to be super careful with him. And whenever I get into nurse mode, unfortunately, it turns off my sex drive because I just want to take care of him, and apparently, yeah, that's not sexy to me. Um... So, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about top surgery from the simple angle of somebody I love is getting a major surgery, and then from the other side of it, too, being a lesbian, that's a body part that I like. But I think in the long run, we're solid, you know? That's not going to be something that hurts us. <laughs> um, I think that covers it. Lots of rambling. All right. I will talk to you guys next week, and I promise you everybody else on the channel will Let's, you know, chime in over the next couple of days, no worries. Alright, hope you guys are having a good day and stuff. Bye.